Hi, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about this instrument um, I just finished. Um, it, uh, it's an acoustic bass that was converted from a regular acoustic guitar. Uh, I was inspired to do this by someone on YouTube who uh, did something similar. They took an acoustic guitar and um, restrung it and did some tweaks uh, to make it play like a bass, and that worked out really well. Uh, I took it a little bit further by actually changing the scale of the bass. Um, I changed it to a 30-inch scale. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this is because it's really difficult to find 30-inch scale acoustic basses. I've only seen a few of them online. Uh, so the way I did that was I removed all the frets uh, from the guitar and refretted it. And I also released the bridge um, so the strings could intonate properly at a 30 inch scale. I also made a tailpiece out of an old brass hinge that um, I reshaped. A um, couple of other things. I, uh, I did a zero fret on this guitar. Uh, I like zero frets because it's, uh, you kind of get your, the, I don't like cutting nuts. I think they're, they're a lot of work to cut. Um, I really like the way a, a capo sounds and the zero fret kind of does the same thing. And it, it's nice to get your action set just in the process of, of uh, leveling and crowning your frets. So anyway, I put a zero fret in. Um, the one mistake I made with it is I extended the fretboard with a small piece of bone. I don't know if you can see it, but it's really small. Um, and I didn't need to do that. When I got done with it, I realized, well, I could have, because I was taking all the frets out. As long as I ended up with a thirty-inch scale, I could have put the I could have put the zero fret anywhere I wanted. I mean, within reason. <laughs> uh, you want to put it here. Um, and it would have worked out just fine. So next time, maybe I'll do that. Uh, so anyway, this this piece of bone was way too too small, and the the strings wouldn't break over the zero fret at an acute enough angle to touch the nut. So I had to bump the nut back a little further. Uh, I tried something different. I, I this nut is made of. Uh, I think Elkhorn, Elkhorn or Deerhorn, I can't remember, I'll look it up. But um, it was a pretty good material to work with. Probably not ideal for the knot. It was easier to work than bone, but it's a little tacky. Uh, it's a little more rubbery than bone. So it seems good. Uh, probably not going to transmit tone as well as bone might, and uh, might might bind a little more bone. Um, what else can I say about that? Oh, yes. Um, the If you notice, the frets are missing here. Uh, I stopped at the 13th fret because it was very cumbersome trying to cut fret slots on a fretboard that's already on a guitar. Uh, it's one thing if you're just refretting to go and rechase the fret slots, but to put brand new fresh slots where the fretboard extends onto the the soundboard is very difficult and I would never use those frets anyway. Uh, so I quit after the 13th fret. And then I have this little area where I can do nice little fretless stuff. I'll never do that. But um, what else can I tell you? I uh, plug the uh, guitar tuner holes and re-space them for bass tuner holes, and you can see the plugs probably in there. Um, I also uh, screwed up the headstock. You can all <laughs> you can see how there's a a splice in there, and then a, a joint that I had to make to correct my mistake. I put the first two holes way too close to each other. The tuner's 
banged into each other. They, there was no way to put them in. So uh, long story short, I ended up cutting and re-splicing the piece back on and re-drilling the holes and then reshaping the head. And then I put a, a poplar veneer I cut, which is a little thick. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, I figured that would cover my mistake, cover the old holes that were filled, and also add some strength to that repair I made. Uh, other than that, I stripped the top and sanded it. And that is about it. Um, it turned out way better than expected. Um, I like this better than um, just about any of the full scale acoustic basses I've played. I haven't played a ton of them, but this one feels a lot better um, because I I, I kind of copied the a bass that I like, and I like short scale basses. This this neck is based on a Fender short scale Jaguar bass, um, which is kind of a jazz bass neck. Uh, I actually cut the profile of the neck to match that. Um, in doing so, I lost my octave marker, so I inlaid new octave markers made of uh, those bamboo, bamboo skewers. Skewers, you make. Uh, I don't know, shish kebab out of. Uh, I also replaced the octave markers because I had to pull out the octave markers to to, uh, to finish the uh, fretboard. I replaced those with uh, small bowels, sanded those and polished them. Um, another thing I should say is uh, I actually re-radiused the fretboard. Um, this guitar came with a 12-inch radius. And the spec on the Jaguar bass was nine and a half. So uh, I re-radiused that with a radius block. And to fill the fret slots, um, they filled with rosewood sawdust naturally. So as they filled, I dropped in water thin super glue to mix the sawdust. And that, after several times, that uh, filled the slots really nicely. It was really hard substance. <clears throat> I think that's all I have to say about this. Um, I don't really feel like playing for you. Oh, what the hell. <laughs>